What up, y'all? Welcome back. It's Analyze Data Day 2. Data, 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 data. Uh, today's video, we're going to continue to look at like how we start putting all this stuff together. Like, How do we really make sense of all the data that is in front of us? What does it mean? What kind of, how do we answer questions? How do we organize it? Um, you know, and again, this is that thing where we start thinking about how math really makes this connection into the real world. Uh, you know, that cross between what we see in science with data collection and how that data is really also numbers, but also how we analyze it and look at it. So we're just going to dive into that today and continue to play around with this stuff. So if you were not a part of video, uh, day one, analyze is that really fancy, uh, word for look at. Right. And then data is just stuff that we collect, right? It's information that we have, uh, numbers and whatnot. And so if you look over here, we have collected some data. What we have over here to the left is a uh, chart that has collected the data of dog weight in pounds. So what has happened in this scenario is that a certain number of dogs, which we can actually look into by analyzing the data, were weighed and the weight of each dog was put into this um, chart, if you will. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and take a look and analyze this data. And then we'll also think about like this the work we want to do around that. So uh, if, again, you weren't with us before, then this is a bit of a review, but that's okay if it's brand new to you because here's your review is your first time. So you're not reviewing, you're learning. What? Okay, anyway, uh, one of the first things we're going to do is before we analyze this data, we want to organize our data, which we're going to do so using a line plot. So a line plot is literally a number line that has things put onto it. That's what it means to plot. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and start that on the next page. But to do so, when creating a line plot, there's a few things we need. We're going to need a title, which is going to be our dog weights, right? The weight of a dog, whatever. Um, and then we're going to probably go ahead and need to build that number line by, by, again, analyzing our data. So let's go to page two and look at this. So... Like I said, we're going to take a look at, uh, uh, not that, this right here. So we're going to look at dog weights uh, based on the information we were given. So there's a title. Uh, we're going to build a number line. i try to keep that as straight as I can. Then we're going to think about some of the data points that go on here. So uh, again, when we think about our smallest number that we see in our data, right? So like the smallest number in the data, we call that the minimum, minimum. And when we see the largest, we call that the maximum. And that's where we actually gonna set things up because this, uh, this is gonna be our min. This will be our max for our number line. Uh, and I'm going to put some numbers to that, but I just want to go over that real quick. I don't like the way this looks. Hold on. Sorry. I got to erase this. But minimum and maximum is where we start. So what that means is we're going to go back and look at our data, and we're going to find the smallest number we can see in that data set. So let's see. Let's jump back to this, our dog's weight in pounds. And if we look here, it looks like to me the smallest number that we are finding would be six, I think. That looks right. Yeah, six, okay. So let's go back to page two. So that's our minimum, our minimums. Oh man, I gotta keep re remembering that thing. Our minimum is six. And then we're gonna go and look at our maximum, which is gonna be the largest number we find in our set of data. And that looks like 11 and one. Oh, it looks like 12 and one fourth. Yeah, I don't see anything larger than that. So let's go back here and we're going to go ahead and put for our max. Uh, sorry, I'm going to have to delete that. Sorry. So we have place, but our, that's our maximum, right? And this is going to be 12 and one half. I already forgot after all that. 12 and one Fourth, 12 and one fourth. See, I knew it didn't quite stick. It's a good thing I'm analyzing this data, huh? I don't know what a mistake. All right, so here we go. Come back 
So that's our lar our smallest to our largest in terms of our data that we have. I also then want to make sure that we have tick marks, right? Those are the, the slash lines you see on a number line like that. That's a tick mark that each tick mark does have a label of our data. So we're going to go back and look at the next piece. So from six, our next smallest looks like it is uh, right here, seven and one fourth. And who knows, I, I might miss something, which is why it's really good to analyze your data to look at it. So, you know, if I flip back and forth and you're screaming at the, man, I already forgot, fourth or half? Oh boy, I gotta, I gotta be more aware. Oh, one fourth, okay, cool. All right, it's this whole thing when I gotta go back and forth between screens, you know, it's just really confusing. All right, so we got seven one fourth is our next value. Uh, we're gonna need another tick mark after that. So let's pop back and look for the next. It looks like eight and one half would be our next piece. So I'm gonna come back over here. This would be eight and one half. And then um, I'm gonna go out here a little bit. And the reason why there's a little intentionality here is when I look at my next number, right? We did like seven and a fourth and then eight and a half. Those are, you know, within one-ish. But my next smallest number is 11 and a half. So that's actually three higher than eight and a half, which is why when we come here, you see my tick marks kind of spaced out a little bit differently because this is a number line. So we do want to represent, in a sense, the way those numbers go, right? And if you think, again, and you're looking, and of course, you know, I can't help but stop to talk about this. Like, this is about the difference of, well, not even about, this is the difference of one and a fourth. Uh, the distance of this is one and a fourth. This is a distance of three, right? So we would really have to pretend like there's these other tick marks in here um, that represent those things that we're doing. And it's not necessary to have them in there, but like this again, it's a number line. So what I'm labeling is important, but also what I don't label is important, like understanding that flow. Um, okay, and then if we go home, we had 11 and a half, and the next is 12 and one fourth. So that's our maximum. So that would actually be it. So I'm going to come back here and look at this. And I'm actually going to do a little bit of editing. I'm going to move this up a little bit. I feel like it's hanging too far near the end. Uh, if I kind of look at this number line, I actually realize there is some editing I can do. Because I actually, I think it would actually make more sense to maybe put 11 and a half about here. Right? Because that's about 1. Yeah, and I'm just going to move some of this stuff around, which is fine. So 11 and a half, we're going to get rid of that because we just moved it. Maybe I should keep all my writing to the black right now. Um, at eight and a half. I can actually move that one over a little bit more. So let's put like I don't know, eight and a half like right here. And then we'll just move uh, seven and a fourth over just a tad. Right. And again, that's going to give that that ability for my data to be seen. And it's also going to be, as I like to say, it can breathe, right? There's space in between these things so I can see them a little bit better. But that would be my data right there. So here's the start of a line plot is that there is a representation of my data on each tick mark. And, and really, if we think like, what does this mean? Well, again, these are the weights of dogs. So there are some dogs that weigh six pounds. Oh, I guess that would be important for the title, actually. I'm going to put LBS abbreviation for pounds. Uh, there are some dogs that weigh seven and one fourth pound. There are some dogs that weigh eight and a half pounds. There are some dogs that weigh 11 and a half pounds. And there are some dogs that weigh 12 and one fourth pounds, according to my data. Okay. So with that being said, what we do now need to move into as we organize this is understanding the frequency. And that's another really cool, important word that we're learning with this frequency. And remember, frequency is the word for how often. So when we think about, again, that there are some dogs at our minimum that weigh six pounds, the frequency is actually asking that question of how many dogs weigh six pounds. There, we know there are some dogs that weigh six pounds, but how many? If we look or analyze our data, we notice that there are two dogs that weigh six pounds. So I'm going to come over here. And in above my six pounds, I'm going to put two X's. One X is going to represent a dog. So two dogs. So 
we're going to continue this and we're going to go with frequency. So when we go back to our data, we're going to look at how many dogs weigh seven and one fourth. That's the frequency. So let's see, we come over here and we're looking for seven and one fourth. So there's one. There's one. Okay, great. That was easy. So I'm going to come over here. There's one dog that weighs seven and one fourth. So I'm going to put one X on my line plot. All right. How many dogs weigh eight and a half pounds? Eight and one half pounds. Well, let's see. There's one, there's two, there's three. Now, notice what I'm doing. This is actually very helpful is when I come back to my data and I look at this, like it is helpful to like circle and count or cross out when I use them. So I don't make mistakes. So eight and a half, one, two, three. So we're going to come back. And we're going to say, all right, well, there's three. There's going to be three X's. I want to note one thing that is important. If you can see this, I am really lining things up, right? It's a lot of like place value. Look, my ones are all lined up together. My twos are lined up together, right? And, and this is how we can analyze the data and look at it is because it's more organized and clean. And that's something to be really aware of. That's an intentional move. Like you want to do that on purpose. Don't go to like slop town and crazy town where like, you're like, oh yeah, there's six X's. You're like, ah, yeah, right? Like no one can read that. I don't even know what that is. Don't do that. Okay, that was fun, tangent. Okay, moving on, uh, 11 and one half pounds. So we go back to our data. We are looking for 11, one half pounds. How many dogs was that? Looks like we had one dog. That was 11 one half pounds. So we're gonna come back here and we are gonna note that one dog. And then our final data piece is 12 and one fourth pounds. And it looks to us that we have one, two, three, four, and five dogs that would weigh at 12 and one fourth pounds. So five dogs. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay, now we have this organized. This is where it comes down to that analyze. Like, how do we analyze it? And how do we make sense of it? And what does it look like? Um, and the cool thing is, is this helps us. Because when we look at this, we can start asking ourselves some questions, right? Uh, one question just might be like, how many dogs weigh 11 and one half pounds? Well, there's our data. We have one X. So that answer would be one. Um, and then there's some other things to think about, like the minimum and the maximum and the frequency. And these are things that we will look at. So I'm going to pop to page three and let's kind of write those words down. So, right, again, there's the minimum. And that's the smallest number that is in my data set. It's not the one that occurs to the least amount. It's just the smallest number. And we'll talk about that because that is definitely a thing. And we are going to look at the maximum. Don't be afraid to write these in your journal. I noticed yesterday a lot of you were like, I know this. I don't What is this word? What does it mean? We're going to look at the frequency. And then we're also going to look at something known as the range. Okay. Um, and we'll put that. Let's like kind of put some, some definitions to this. So again, when we're talking minimum, minimum is the smallest number in your data, smallest in data. Your maximum is your largest in data. Now frequency, and this is where it gets a little confusing between maximum and frequency. Frequency is what happens the most. And that's what frequency means. It means the amount something happens, right? Uh, I am frequently um, meowed at by my cat doesn't mean that my cat is the largest animal in my house. It's not the maximum, uh, but it frequently uh, interrupts me by meowing more often than the dog. I don't know if that example really sticks, but it does make sense. But that's what frequency means. It's like the most often things happen, right? Um, I, uh, yeah, anyway, so that's most often. We'll look at that. And then our, our range is where we find the difference between the minimum and the maximum, okay? And we're gonna put these in here. We're gonna look at our data and answer these things. So don't you worry. I know you're worried. You're like, oh no, are we gonna answer these things? 
I, I hope we answer these things. I'm so worried on whether we'll answer these things. And we are. So let's do that. So let's jump back to our data and look at it and analyze it. What does it tell us? So let's first look for the smallest number in our data. So when we come back and we look at our data here, when we analyze it and look at it, we're looking for, and here's a good way to think about minimum, it's not the X's we're looking at, it's the numbers on the number line. We're looking for the smallest number on the number line that does have at least one X above it. I guess I should clarify that because you might have a number line that has some other numbers on it, but there's no X's. Anyway, we look at that. We'll see our minimum, which we already talked about and labeled, is six. So we can pop right back over here, and we're going to go, and we're going to answer that. that. That is six. It is six pounds. That is the smallest any dog weighs. And when we look at the largest data, we are going to look at, again, on this, what is the largest number that has X's above it? Not how many X's, but the largest number that have X's on it. And that's our maximum down here. And that is 12 and one fourth pounds. So I'm going to come and I'm going to put 12 and one fourth pounds. And then again, frequency. Now, this is where it's confusing because the frequency can actually be any number on your data. It just depends on who has the most X's. Now, what's fun about this data, which has you thinking, is that if you look, 12 and 1 fourth pounds actually has the most X's. So, yes, it is the most frequent, but it is actually a coincidence that the most frequent is also the maximum. Because that might not always be the case. But that is what you're looking for. Which one has the most X's? Which, which occurred the most often? And 12 and 1 fourth occurred the most often there are five dogs that weigh 12 and one fourth the second most frequent and maybe this will help you when you think about this the second most frequent is not 11 and one half that only has one dog on it the second most frequent the number that has the second most x's would actually be eight and one half we don't need to know what's the second frequent number. We don't always look at that. And you will in, in, in science and data when you look at the things. But for now in math, when we're just looking at frequency, we do want to know which one is the most. And it is 12 and one half pounds. So what has frequency to it is, and this is where we can say this, the frequency is 12 and one half pounds. And there were five that went there. And then when we go ahead and break down the difference between the minimum and the maximum, when we're finding that range, again, what that means is I'm actually subtracting 12 and 1 fourth because that's my maximum. And I'm subtracting six pounds from that because that's the minimum. So to get that range, uh, what does that put us at? Three, four, Oh, man, I got to do some work here. Okay, let's do some work. Uh, let's see, I'm going to turn this into a mixed number. So I'm going to call this five and four fours because that's the same thing as six. Um, I can't take, okay, so now again, I'm going to make this 11. And I'm going to make this five fours because I'm adding four fours to it. So 11 minus five would be six holes. And then five minus one would be one fourth. And that would be pounds, right? Because the range is six and one fourth pounds. The difference between my smallest animal and my largest animal is six and one fourth pounds. Okay, so that's it. Again, you know, looking at one set of data can take a long time, which is why we're only looking at one in this video. But I do want you to make sense of this. And like, this is what we do. And I didn't really put this back on the page. So I'm going to come back here and just kind of talk about those three final steps we did. Right. We did an organize with that line plot. And then we really just did. I'm going to squeeze it down here. We did. We analyzed. Which means we looked at the data. And then we from there, we just really uh, we answered. We answered the question. Those are really the steps, which are pretty funny because they're a lot simpler to a lot of things we do. But if you think about it, organize, analyze, and answer is kind of the way you want to look at your data. So that is day two of data analysis or to analyze and look at collected information or data. Uh, with that being said, I will continue a robot voice. Uh, you've done a great job. You're awesome. Let's keep doing the work. Remember, ask questions. That's the whole goal of learning. When you're not sure, Ask 